My brand is going to be the fastest growing social media jewelry brand in the world. A brand so big that it will rival Pandora in the coming years. And to make this dream a reality, I'm going to be investing six and a half thousand dollars to hopefully make ten thousand dollars in one day. I, last month, I started a jewelry brand. I pumped in about $6,000 into influencer advertising, and then we spent about $1,500 into the rest of the process. And we did this to be profitable and to hopefully hit $10,000 on launch day alone. And instead, we hit about $7,700, meaning we made a heavy loss. Yeah, we failed. And so we needed to improve on every part of our brand if we were gonna be able to hit our $10,000 per day goal. And so we started with the product. I felt the product wasn't a great fit. After doing a decent amount of research, I came to the conclusion that women don't buy one necklace, but they want to buy multiple. So that's what I needed to sell multiple necklaces as one product and so i asked my supplier for better necklaces and after about 15 days of waiting for shipping these were the necklaces she shipped me okay so this is just one of the necklace samples that have been shipped over by my supplier and a couple of things first i think these necklaces are gonna do really really well i think this is exactly what these girls actually want to buy i think the quality is kind of good on these necklaces i mean i wanted necklaces that don't have some weird coloring that comes out the moment you put them in water and so quality is like literally the most important thing to me and we need that quality if we're gonna break through the noise of all the millions of Instagram jewelry brands that exist and actually make $10,000 on launch this day. This was the website we had. It's the same as the previous month's website and we only changed a couple of things here and there. Primarily because we were switching to selling only one high quality necklace instead of selling a multitude of different necklaces. And since we wanted that premium feel, we kind of changed our store a little bit. We now needed to move on into the most important part, marketing. Okay, so when it comes to marketing, our brand and making it feel luxurious and important. We already had the Instagram account with like a hundred thousand fake followers and we're still using that account just so we can have some social proof and make people think that our brand is important. But we also decided to do something that I thought I was only going to reveal in my course that's linked below by the way and that is paying for press. Yeah, we went on Fiverr and other websites and we went ahead and were able to find people that were willing to write stories about our brand just for a couple of dollars and so we paid them and now we've got like three articles on the internet about our brand and literally talking about our story as a up and coming important brand. And I can already feel some of you guys starting to judge me. And I'm just saying, don't judge me. Every single brand does this. From Louis Vuitton to Nike, everyone pays for some nice press. So don't believe everything you read online, especially if that has something to do with reviews. So let's move on into other marketing strategies that you've never heard of and that are probably going to help us reach $10,000 on launch day. And this new marketing strategy that I'm thinking about, I'm pretty excited because this has the potential to make us really successful. Last month, I paid a couple of influencers to post about our brand. And we didn't succeed with that strategy because two of those influences that I paid had made or had terrible traffic. So I decided to ax those influences. But we still could work with the three other influences I wanted to work with. But now we had some extra space on the marketing budget. And so what did we do with the extra $1,000 in marketing spend? Well, I went into Facebook marketing. And this is where the genius comes in. Okay, so after doing some research, I actually realized that a lot of men buy women's jewelry. And so my marketing strategy, selling women's jewelry to men. This is not a crazy idea. Trust me, I know this sounds crazy, but it's not a crazy idea. This is the thinking. There is a difference between the people that use a product and then the people that buy a product. And I, since I'm marketing, want to market to people that buy a product. And since a lot of men buy products for their girlfriends and their wives, that's exactly who I want to be marketing towards the buyers of the product. Literally, after doing some digging, I realized that actually a lot of people that go into Pandora, the store, are actually men who buy these Pandora necklaces for their girlfriends or their wives or their sisters. And so, what if I spent a decent chunk of our marketing budget targeting specifically men? This could make us a lot of money, considering that it would probably be cheap to target women's necklaces to men, because no one else is going to be doing that. I don't know, this seems like a pretty decent marketing strategy to me, and I don't know, I I, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in this. So I was gonna test my Facebook marketing theory and afterwards trying to scale with the influencer strategy like we did last time. But 
Just as you imagined, as soon as we tried to launch our Facebook ad, something very predictable happened. Yeah, our Facebook ads got blocked. I mean, I don't even know how we had misleading claims. But anyway, I tried to fix it. I tried watching all the YouTube videos on how to fix this Facebook stuff and none of it was working. I tried changing out my creative, that didn't work too, until I went onto Instagram. And I basically asked people if they had any fixes or hacks that they might know or have and then my man, the absolute legend Moose on Instagram came in and saved the day. He replied to my story on Instagram and he literally fixed my advertising feedback score and he unblocked my Facebook ads for me. He did this all for the price of a shout out on my next video. So definitely check him out. If you ever have any Facebook advertising problems, go to his Instagram and ask for his help. He will help you. So yeah. Anyway, after running the Facebook ads for one day, these were the results of my Facebook marketing experiment. Well, we weren't profitable, and I'm sure some of you guys guessed. I'm seeing that actually the dashboard is looking relatively positive. Like, for example, our CPMs are lower than I would expect for Facebook. And I think that's literally because there is no competition for what we're doing. Literally no competition for the interests that we're targeting with the demographic that we're targeting. And I think the only problem that we have was the fact that the men had no reason to buy the necklaces at this time. I mean, maybe if it was around Mother's Day, Valentine's Day or Christmas, we will see a lot more men buying our necklaces, but it's because of the fact that it's a random day in June and there's no real need to buy these necklaces. And so that's why we weren't actually profitable. And that's my theory for why. But that doesn't matter. We still spent $5,000 on like a couple of influencers to go ahead and post us on their 24 hour Instagram story. And we used literally the exact same marketing strategy as the last video. And if you wanna see that strategy, then you can just click the video over there or here. But basically, let's see if we can go ahead and achieve our goal of $10,000 on launch day. Okay, so we literally did better than last time, hitting 5K in literally the first hour of us being up. This is absolutely insane. And the reason we were able to do it is because we got much better traffic this time. We've got traffic from London, Texas, and Canada. So we should be hitting our goal literally in the next couple of hours. Okay, just like last time, the second hour, the amount of money we're making has gone down. We just got a sale right there. And that's that. We just made an extra 1K this hour. And the next hour is probably gonna go down gradually. And I was right. Going ahead, getting a couple hundred dollars here and a couple hundred dollars there to end the night with about 8.4K in revenue. But the big question, is that all profit? And the answer is yes and no. No, because last month we absolutely tanked this project. And so as a brand as a whole, we are definitely not profitable, just almost breaking even. But today, or at least this month, yes, yes, yes we are. But we're definitely gonna have to think of a new marketing strategy. We can't keep marketing to the exact same people every single month. It's it's gonna run dry at some point. And if you wanna see me come up with the different strategies that we might take over step by step, then check out my program link below. There's literally gonna be like a two hour section where I show you guys how to build your own jewelry brand from supplier to buyer. And if not, check out episode two of us blowing up a store from zero to $50,000. That should be dropping later this week. If not, then this is weird because I'm pointing at, at, at nothing.